Okay, after I finished drilling all the holes, I laid out all these center boards, but first I squared off the edge of them that's, that's gonna be up front here. The header panel, like this top piece is pretty straight, but inside here, it's not real straight, but I wanna square off the wood so that it's square um, to the length. So, <clears throat> now I'm just gonna make sure that I space it back about an eighth of an inch. That will allow for any water to drain. Not that I'll be washing this truck much, but get stuck in the rain or something. Okay. And I also took just a scrap piece of this tube that I had and I cut it to the length so it'll fit between the bed rails and right up against this flat face so I can make a nice straight line across there for all the board lengths. I'm gonna number them um, so that they'll just go back in the same place, but this gives me a nice straight cut. The tailgate, it has a little bit of a bow to it. You know, it's the original tailgate, so not perfect. You could take a chalk line and go across here if you had a couple of people. But since I had this extra metal laying around, I just use it. Okay. Cut all those. That'll give me a nice even line on the end. Then I can work on these four corner pieces. I'm gonna have to take a jigsaw and do some of that by hand. What I'd like to do is bring it up here a little bit but I want to angle the cut back, like the face of the cut, like angle it back so it'll fit a little snugger against this wheel well. If I'm just straight, then I'll have this ugly edge that you'll be able to see really well. So I'm gonna do my best to angle it back. I might have to do a couple test pieces on that and uh, try to figure it out. All right, so these four corners are turning out to be a little trickier than I thought. I still have to trim the width on that one, trim it up about a quarter of an inch, but I've got it fitting pretty well. This one is cut and fit. The nice thing is the curve, once I got the curve cut around the wheel well, um, they're pretty much a mirror image of each other. So I can cut one, these two I can just flip around and use it as a template this one should be a mirror image just flip it over and that'll get me real close i have to kind of creep up on it with the grinder meaning lots of little grinds fit it make sure it's nice and snug grinder it again i don't know if you can see that corner but there's a little bit of a raised lip right here that i'm kind of having to cut around too, and I'm just using a grinder to make it a mess on the truck and the garage itself. But Using a jigsaw, and then I'll come back and hit it with the sander with my hand. I had one wasted cut, we just a tad too short. So, gets a little bit of a extra wide gap here I've been compensating that for that on the others um, I really can't go any farther this way because I'm even with my other boards so I may recut that one and I'm trying to back bevel the cut so that uh, you know that angle that wheel well tub
just slightly going up on that to mark this. I can grind up back grind a little bit of that so it sits flush on here. This was always on the other side. Jigsaw is my dad's. It's an old one. It doesn't necessarily cut exactly straight. Okay, so it's a little bit of a gap here. So now I'm going to come back and grind a little more off the bottom. Then that'll sit down a little more flush. It'll be nice and snug there. Pretty good. Nice radius here, pretty tight. Same here. Got the other side done. <clears throat> I notched it right here, A, so I could get to my holes for the strap. But I left this a little thicker. I didn't want this end to get too thin and crack. So, um, it's not going to be touching the, the next board over. There's still a little bit of a space, but I needed to be able to get to the bolt holes here. So I just left this end a little thicker on all four. Most of it's going to be covered up with the strap anyway, but with the vibration and everything, I just didn't want it to crack. That That's getting kind of thin because I ground on the back side of it to get it nice and flush against there. So I just left that a little extra thick. I think it will be you won't know you won't see it and uh, keep it from cracking <clears throat> everything's cut at the end I did have to uh, probably see it better on this one where the tailgate comes up there's a little bump right there right where this wood hit so to just relieve make a little relief in the wood right there but other than that good. I'm going to go set it up in my other shop where it's a little bit cleaner because right now sawdust everywhere. And well first out here I'm going to hit the tops with the uh, orbital sander just to kind of give it a nice scuff up and open up the pores of the wood to accept the stain really well. I've got a couple areas that I need to sand off like some pencil marks and stuff like that. So I'll get that all done wipe it down in here, take it over to the other garage bay, set it all up so I can stain it. Then I can take all this metal work out from under here too and get it set up to paint. I'll probably just paint it in this shop.
course, sanded and cleaned up, wiped down, blew off all the dust. Got them set up in the other garage to stain them. Now I'm going to, I've got two one by eights, and they're gonna go, one's gonna go across the back of here. So if I put something in here, you know, it won't fall out. So I'll kind of close this little section off. <clears throat> and then the other one's gonna go here, just to kind of keep road debris and extra dirt and stuff out of here. It's not gonna be completely sealed off, but it'll just kind of enclose it as best I can with that. With that. So that's what I'm gonna work on now is getting these cut and uh, try to get this fit in, fitted in there. where I'm at with everything all the metal is apart and I've used a good wax and grease remover to clean them all up let them sit overnight got this bed strips here the cross braces got them all marked so I know exactly where they go back so I'm gonna start painting this today I'm going to use this POR15 high temp, just something that I had, a flat black, but this uh, paint is nice and sticks to everything and it's pretty durable. So I'm going to use it for all the metal except the strips, the bed strips. I'm going to use this semi-gloss black, that's what I've been using on a lot of the parts on this truck. So I'm going to use that semi-gloss black to DE1635. So that's where we're at there. Get this painted, get a coat on this. Couple coats for the next couple days. It's a dark walnut. The number's kind of covered up, but dark walnut. I just applied it pretty heavy, let it sit on there a couple minutes, and then wiped it down. I think this is going to look good with that green in the truck. And then here's the urethane that I'm going to put on it, Helmsman, and it's a satin. So I'll probably do a couple coats on the back and maybe three or four coats on the front. I would like to spray it, but I just don't have a facility to spray it without making a big mess. So I'm either going to brush it or roll it on. Sand it between coats. And it will look good. Something else to be mindful of when you set these up is depending on the dry time. Um, you're going to want to flip them over, obviously, to take the other side. It really doesn't matter for all the framework if, let's say, I flipped it over and it got scratched. You know, maybe I flipped it over too soon, or when I flipped it over, I slid it on this other metal and it scratched it. Um, 
A, you're not going to see it, it's underneath everything, so not a problem. But the bed strips, those you're going to see. So right now I'm painting the back side of them. I'm going to let them dry overnight once I get two or three coats on it. Then I'll flip those over, paint the other side. I noticed some fish eyes in a couple of areas. That means there's still some oil or something on there that's not reacting good with that paint. So uh, once I flip these over, uh, I need to wipe them down again and make sure they're nice and clean on the top because that'll be the side to see. This other side, of course, will be down on the wood. So just be mindful of that. It's the same with these. Once these are dry, uh, I'll put a second coat on, on this side and then probably let them dry for two or three hours and flip them over. But I just don't want them to like, stick to the cardboard and ruin the look of it. It will be hidden, but I still want it to look. Okay, these are the little rivet nut inserts. You're going in the holes. Already started putting a couple in there. There's a little adjustment. I'll put a link in the video for this tool on Amazon. There's a little adjustment here that I had to play with uh, because it wasn't giving me enough throw to smash, smashes this collar down. So open up the arms, thread that on all the way. In the hole. You can turn this, it's easy to turn the whole tool if you have room. Nice in there, nice and stuff. Show you up in here. You can see there how it's smashed. Nice and snug. You don't want them to spin. Oh, I'm tight enough.
fold that in as well. Um, it goes over the air ride lines just fine. There's plenty of room there. And then I get the back pieces bolted in and the cross movers. After three coats, pretty heavy coats, I sanded between each one. Wood is looking great. It's a satin finish. It's real nice. So I'm going to work on getting this put in the truck now. I one of those rare days in February where it's like 60 degrees, 10 o'clock in the morning. So I'm going to start with these and I need to mark underneath where these bolt holes are and I'm going to use the, the uh, button head cap screws and a larger washer and that's what it's going to go in there. Yesterday, 64, 65 degrees out. I'll show you what we're dealing with today. Yeah, like six inches of snow already. Missouri weather. All right, so I'm gonna try to finish up or at least get quite a bit farther on this bed, bed floor. You know, sometimes when you're drilling through wood, if you drill maybe too aggressively or with too big a bit, when it comes through, it'll splinter the wood out. So I'm just starting with an eighth inch bit. Um, I think on all the other holes, I'll put some tape down over it too, so the tape will help keep it from splintering. And then I'm gonna come back with like a three eighths bit, because I'm just using a quarter inch bolt, but I want a little bit of room for expansion and contraction on the wood, but also if I need to kind of line things up a little bit, then I can do so. regular like I don't know if they're galvanized but hot dipped washers and I just painted them same color as the strips are Boards. I don't know if I 
mentioned in the other video, but I also put a urethane on the bottom. Uh, and then these boards that are front and back here, they have urethane all around them. Of course, I think that side's really good, but also the bottom because it's just going to get a lot of moisture and a lot of weather from underneath when you're driving it. Strips in yet. Trying to make it even on these slats at this end. I'm just using this bar that I used to mark all the wood and uh, make sure that it's straight and even across there. going to take this end bolt out and make sure that there's this metal is overlapping the wood enough like I adjusted the back. So double check that for this. all the 8th inch with this 3 16th and hopefully cure that issue. I've seen a few other guys and I talked to them about it too and, and that's what they said they're using is 3 16th. I thought 8th inch would be good enough but it's not so that's on me. Um, so that's another, I think this 
just these six pieces, there was about $75 worth of metal, so it's a $75 mistake that I made. But I'll show you what I'm talking about. So, this. If you look right along the edge of that metal, you can see that it's humped up between the bolts. So I can see here a little bit of movement. But as you, if you were driving and hitting a few bumps, that's what you're gonna hear all the time, which would irritate me, and I can't have that. So we're gonna change it to the 316th. So I'm just gonna replace one at a time so I don't have to worry about readjusting any of the boards. You know, front to back, so it's nice to leave it along the back. Finished up with the 316 strapping. And look down here. It's much tighter to the wood. It's flatter. So, lesson learned, 3 sixteenths, not 8 inch. 